Welcome to the Contrarian Investor Podcast. We give voice to those who challenge a prevailing sentiment in global financial markets. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing on this podcast should be taken as investment advice. Guests were not compensated for their appearance, nor do they supply payment in order to appear. Individuals on this podcast may hold positions in the securities that are discussed. Listeners are urged to educate themselves and make their own decisions. This podcast episode may have ads and the occasional announcement. To listen without ads or announcements and take advantage of a host of other benefits, consider becoming a premium subscriber. Prices start at $9 per month. Visit the website contrarian.supercast.tech. That's T-E-C-H for more information. Now, here's your host, Mr. Nathaniel E. Baker. The Contrarian Investor Podcast wants to find the best and give them a voice. To help in our search, we use Covey to find and track the best contrarians. Our guests' stock picks are available in real time on the website covey.io slash contrarian. Now, these portfolios are available for anyone to view, track, and share. And on top of that, we encourage our listeners to join our community by building virtual portfolios of stocks and ETFs to compete and rise to the top. At the end of the year, we'll interview the top performing analyst on Covey right here on the Contrarian Investor Podcast. That means you or any great contrarians you know can rise to the top based on merit and get a voice. Again, the website, covey.io slash contrarian. Mark Samirsky joining us from Denmark. You are on the podcast because our partner site, covey.io, and you placed at the very top of the returns for participants on that website with 380% returns in your portfolio over the past year. Past performance is not a guide to future results, as we all know, but I'm very curious to how you achieved this return over the past year. And then I'm also curious to find out about how you are positioning your portfolio going forward. I just noticed that it is right now 100% in cash. That could be due to some issue, but you're nodding your head, so it appears to be correct. So, but let's start off with telling us how you did this returns over the last year, what kind of trades and positions you had on. Okay, so just to first uh, start upon this question, I joined Covey a little bit earlier, so I had some time to test this uh, uh, website and how it works, so I played around with the leverages and what kind of uh, uh, financial assets are available on Covey, and I have um, a method uh, which is uh, kind of uh, to short uh, altcoins which uh, start to increase in price compared to Bitcoin and S&P 500. Meaning that I'm following the correlation uh, between uh, these three assets, meaning that S&P 500, uh, Bitcoin and altcoins. Moreover, I'm following the financial uh, assets which are related to macroeconomics macroeconomical performance, like how does it look like? For example, gold or DXY and VIX, of course, as well to, to look up on the volatility. Because according to my thesis, like my macro thesis is that uh, around two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we were in a zone that uh, it was not certain that we will have a soft landing or uh, we will have a recession after all. But in my opinion, if you look at now the leading indicators and the yield curve, there are uh, parameters which shows 100% probability that we will have a recession after uh, uh, 18 months, 12 months or something like this. So knowing that uh, I have always a short-term play and a long-term play, and I always try to position it on the, uh, the long-term, meaning that even though short-term I'm not right, and long term, I will be right eventually. Uh, let's hope so. So that's how I speculate. Interesting. How okay. I, I, you, you introduced a bunch of stuff there. So I just wanted to cut you off because there's a bunch of stuff right there yeah. for us to talk about. 
Before you go any further, though, I want to ask you about, you say the correlation between Bitcoin, altcoins, and the S&P. Yes. Okay. These are, they don't all move together? Certainly uh, Bitcoin and altcoins, I would suspect, would move together. And I just thought that, that Bitcoin was basically a risk gauge in general, which meant it would kind of move with the S&P. But you're yes. saying that's different. Yeah, I mean, there is a high correlation uh, right. usually. But however, there are those um, events when, for example, Bitcoin goes up and uh, S&P 500 goes down and the altcoins are going up. VIX, it's uh, going down and uh, DXY is going up. Like these are really rare cases. And uh, I think it happened already once or twice. And these open up opportunities, meaning that something gets off with market pricing in the short term. And there are other, other events which are paying as well. For example, uh, there was now uh, some called like ZK rollups narratives. So it, it says that, to, to be honest, I have no idea what this ZK rollups means in technical it is, but basically, uh, according to my observation, like it's like another layer on a, on, a, on a cryptocurrency and it's going to make it much more efficient and blah, 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 blah. But to be honest, to me, it doesn't matter because to me, it seems that the macroeconomic indicator shows uh, recession. And even though these uh, altcoins go up like 200, 300 percentage, it's not sustainable. It's right. not possible that it's sustainable. So it sounds like you bet on the mean reversion almost, like you have a correlate. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 quite a complex uh, play, and uh, you have to really pay attention for the the riskiness as well. Because I had uh, before you invited me to this podcast, actually, I made a mistake because I was too aggressive and I was not uh, facing into this trade uh, bit by bit. I was pretty aggressive, so I put like 100% of my portfolio on a trade, and I lost like 20% in like three hours. Yeah. So there, I'm there, sure you're the really you're risky. the first person, the first trader in history to ever be aggressive in his trades. Too aggressive. <laughs> but yeah, but that all oh, that that is a pretty big bet there. Okay, so so you had this Bitcoin short on last year. It was short versus the S and P, and you put that on before the whole FTX breakdown and everything else? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I think I was shorting generally uh, cryptocurrency because this, this right. FTX uh, uh, moment or event, how should I uh, elaborate? It, 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 it was actually a black zone event because it, it, it almost came like uh, nowhere because no one really expected it that it can happen. Uh, I'm sure there were people who were already started the investigation and they realized something that something is off with them. How did they make that lot of money? So so something was not all right with them. So they came from nothing really fast and they made like they created the, their algorithm, their backend, their their UI, and everything went surprisingly well until they had liquidity problems and until we realized that they were actually uh, making uh, their valuation uh, higher and higher um, mm. using their uh, coin. So, right. so something there was off as well. Me personally, I didn't really look into that, but when when you start to raise interest rates and when you start to tighten up, then there should be some consequences. Like everybody right. needs liquidity. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. So at what point last year did you go short Bitcoin? Do you remember? I think it topped around sixty-four thousand, right, or something. Was like that last that. year or the year before? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not uh, certain, but I'm not uh, either, it, 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 it had a double top. I remember. Right. Okay. And uh, the first uh, top, I was short back then. However, I didn't realize that it's going to uh, do a double top. So uh, there, I've, I actually, I lost some money. Like uh, personal money, <laughs> not initially, yes. yes. But then it, it it reversed in your favor. Yes, but Looking yeah, up here that, to see. yeah. I mean, at see. that time, at that time, I was not uh, on Kobe. I think at the first stop. Okay, yeah. Bitcoin. I'm looking here. It's funny how fast we forget. Yeah, sixty thousand. That was in in October of 2021. So. Yes. 
that was that was the, the double top that you're talking about. Yeah, and I think yes. Early, it started 2022 at 38,000 or so, and it went up to 47,000 in March. Yeah, yeah. I mean, double top. It depends how it depends on your perspective, but uh, uh, still, That's, yeah. So that turned out to be the high for the year in March, and then. Mm -hmm. It went down, of course, as low as like whatever it was in the 14,000s, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, very interesting. Okay, so that was your trade for last year. Now, you're talking, you, you talk about some of these, these macro inputs that you have, yield curve mm -hmm. inversion, and how these are all pointing to recession. Tell, tell me, talk to me about that. What are these macro inputs um, that you have right now? So basically, um, I have this uh, business cycle theory you know, which starts with the expansion and after that peak and after that tightening and after that uh, phase, which actually uh, shows that we will have the, the financial markets bottom. So basically everything wiped out. The, the businesses mm -hmm. which could which were not sustainable, they were wiped out. And uh, to be honest, uh, if, if, if you like think and look at the financial markets, you actually start to notice that at that time when everything bottomed, that time actually uh, productivity and technology somehow starts to grow. It, it's, right. it, it's, it's somehow, it's like a renew, it's just renew, the economy renew itself. Like it's like, a, it comes into equilibrium. It kills the, the participants who are not, should not get money like liquidity mm. for their, ideas basically mm -hmm. and when uh this time the economy became really expansionary due to the covid as everyone knows so it uh, it, it had a fiscal stimulus monetary stimulus so uh, in my opinion now everybody became addicted to this liquidity and it still needs time uh to 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 resolve this problem mm -hmm. and currently if you look at the wage growth, the, the labor market, actually the wage is still growing. And in order to have a lower inflation, unemployment has to rise, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Unemployment is a crucial point pushing down inflation. And until it doesn't, it doesn't uh, increase, then in my opinion, uh, Fed has a really tough job to, mm -hmm. to push down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if, if you look at the yield curve, yield curve uh, inversion, yes. So you have the, the, the two years and the, and the 10 year uh, pair. Uh, those are inverted. And historically, it has like 100% probability. And above that, we have the, the, the smaller yield curves as well, which uh, I don't remember exactly, but I think it's the two year and uh, three months of uh, yield curve inversion, which is a smaller one. That's actually historically has a good uh, recession comes or not. And okay. besides that, the economic lead, leading indicators as well. So in my opinion, now at this point, the probability it's higher. Uh, it shows uh, higher for recession than uh, to soft landing. But it's personal, like uh, no one knows the future. <laughs> oh, well, you don't? Well, why are you on the podcast then? Come on. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, that's fair. Sick of me yet? Become a premium subscriber and avoid all ads or interruptions. Other benefits as well. Visit contrarian.supercast.tech for more information. Now, the question that I would have, and like you said, it is all about Fed. And as if unemployment is still low and inflation is still high, and we saw last week the PC yeah. deflator came in much higher than anticipated. So inflation is pressure is real. So the Fed can't cut rates. I think that, that was all part of the equation we knew. But if you're saying that there's going to be a recession, shouldn't that reduce the pressure on the Fed and then allow the Fed to cut rates if we, if we do have a recession sooner rather than later? Yeah, uh, that's, um, that really depends. I mean, I, 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 got, I get your point. Uh, according to my observation, if they are going to cut rates, then it's going to result in higher inflation, which is not going not good for of long course. term. So, so it depends what what they will how they will look at it. Like, do they want to save the economy or do they want to push down inflation? And if I'm looking uh, geo geopolitical reasons as well, 
It depends because as you know, like China, it's opening up. And in my opinion, that's going to uh, export inflation to West and US and everybody mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In, the, in the short term. In the long term, it's good for everybody. But in the short term, looking at the China has QE and it has uh, the monetary tools to, to do this uh, expansionary, uh, to, to expand its economy, then it will have consequences on the world. So in, in, in my opinion, it's really complicated. And mm-hmm. knowing about the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine, what what will that do? Like, what's mm-hmm. going to happen there? So, in my opinion, that VIX price really low. Uh, looking at this uh, uncertainty, like, mm. I, I, to, to be honest, uh, I do not get it. Um, um, why um, people are so certain that financial markets are going to perform well in the mm. future? Yeah, like they they actually think that soft landing is possible. Mm. Yeah, yes, indeed, and many have been on this podcast, and they have good points. But so do you, and so as a result of your views here, now you are in one hundred percent cash. Yes, and what what would you what would it take for you to change that? I haven't talked about like in detail. What am I looking at? Like mm. we, I introduced you about the correlation. Um, mm strategy i mean it's not even a strategy it's like a method what i use first to filter what I'm, what's going on and after that i'm looking into the liquidations like the probable liquidation which can happen meaning that you can uh, get data uh looking at uh, uh i don't know uh, the future uh and the futures market on, on an altcoin uh, pair which is usdt and uh, scale or, or something like that and this is related to covid uh, so, so you can look it up that um, at what level it will initiate liquidations. And when the liquidation is initiated, then it's going to push up or down the price depending on uh, where it's located, the liquidation level. And okay. what I'm meaning that um, you have, um, for example, you have, I don't know, Bitcoin and it is uh, 20,000 today. And you can see that uh, there are, I don't know, 10,000 uh, uh, futures open contract. It's positioned on 15,000 level. So those are long. And if it goes below that, then it's going to be liquidated. Or on the opposite side, if it's 25,000 uh, uh, Bitcoin price, 25,000. And um, sorry, uh, on the 25,000 level, uh, there are 15,000 short positions, then um, it's going to initiate liquidation as well if they push up the Bitcoin price. Meaning that if they push up the Bitcoin price, then the price of Bitcoin will increase uh, much rapidly. Okay, because of the way that these options traders have positioned. And um, yeah, I mean, it futures. Futures, yeah, talking futures. About okay. It, yes. Yeah, right, futures. And you're saying that these altcoins also have futures prices? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they, they, okay, they, so I didn't know that. Yeah, they use actually perpetual uh, futures. So that's uh, I see. interesting. Okay, so um, he, here's somebody who's, I'm a novice in the whole, or complete, yeah, in the whole Bitcoin crypto world. So there's a way that you can see here what the futures are pricing and, and I guess what the bets are. Yes, and th- that's another thing that like, uh, you can, addition to these liquidations, uh, what you can look uh, look up, uh, you can take a look at the order flow, meaning that you yeah. can take a look at the, the limit orders on uh, on the market. Let's say uh, you have uh, ten thousand limit orders on uh, twenty five thousand bitcoins, so they want to sell the bitcoin for twenty five thousand, and uh, so that will get absorbed. So meaning that uh, microstructure wise, uh, you can somehow. Uh, see how uh, this uh, how the momentum is going to play out, mm-hmm. and as I told you, uh, I'm trying. I, I'm I tend to position it uh, towards uh, long term, meaning that even though like short term it pushes up like another 20, 30 percent, yeah, it's like it, it hurts, and I, I would think uh, twice that okay, sh- should I uh, close my position or should I let it open. But um, depending on these uh, parameters, uh, I decide what I'm going okay. to do. 
Interesting. Okay. So, and right now these parameters are not giving you any clear direction one way or the other. No, to, 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 to be honest now, I'm, I'm, I'm clueless uh, what to do. And sometimes it's better to do nothing uh, than losing money. <laughs> correct. Correct. What kind of levels would you need to see here to, to, until you're comfortable taking a, taking a position? Well, I think shorting narratives like crypto narratives, which uh, basically shorting these uh, narratives on altcoins, I think that's a pretty good strategy. If I believe we will have a recession and yeah. the Fed won't cut rates, because if not, then it's going to hurt. Yeah. But um, yes, uh, I have other ideas, but it 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 will it will specifically um focus on the option markets because there it has these levels as well what i'm talking about however uh options market introduces uh um other levels for example delta level or right. or gamma level which uh has a similar dynamic like liquidations what i mm-hmm. told you i i, I haven't uh, really explored that that method yet uh, i actually have wrote my master thesis about that but i still need more time to to explore however okay. uh this narrative uh plays currently work yeah work well and so these altcoins that you mentioned what are they called basically it it it, it doesn't matter it shouldn't be bitcoin or or ethereum because these are too big and um it should be small it ha- it should have smaller market caps meaning that I think uh, if you look it up on 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 CoinGecko or 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 what's the other site where you can look at uh, these coins? I don't know. I'm clueless. Co- coin, coin market desk. cap, yeah, coin market cap. Okay. I think then at these coins position it between 100 and uh, 200 market cap. Okay, so, so the smallest. Th- th- these are, yeah, I mean not smallest because there are smaller ones. I, I would say yeah. like middle cap. Yeah, not like okay. So mid cap altcoins, yeah. sure. Okay, but you but you don't yeah. have any positions right now. No, no, no. Okay, no, no. Interesting. All right, this is all very interesting, Mark Samersky. I want to come back and ask you some more about this, about your views on markets, and more importantly about your background. You touched on it, your master's thesis. That will be the uh, what we kick off the second half of the show with. But let's first take a short break and come right back. If you are a premium subscriber. You will not get the break, so don't touch the dial. We'll be right back. In fact, we already are. And for everybody else, to become a premium subscriber, visit the website contrarianpod.substack.com. We hope you're enjoying this episode of the Contrarian Investor Podcast, where we give voice to those who challenge a prevailing narrative in global financial markets. Consider becoming a premium subscriber. For $9 a month or less, premium subscribers receive a number of benefits. Podcasts are posted immediately after they're recorded. Transcripts are made available within 24 hours. Premium subscribers get direct access to the host and access to private channels on our Discord server. They also get generous discounts to our virtual conferences and other services. And of course, there are no ads or interruptions. Visit contrarian.supercast.tech. For more information, that's contrarian.supercast.tech. By the way, you don't need the .tech suffix to get to that website. .com will do the trick. And we also have a Substack that you can where you can sign up for the same prices, same benefits, same details, contrarianpod.substack.com. So if you already have a Substack account and use it, or have the app and use that, that's probably the best way to go. So contrarian.supercast.com or contrarianpod.substack.com. Whole bunch of benefits, including, of course, getting this episode up to a week early without ads or annoying announcements. And you also get the daily contrarian briefing and podcast that is released every market day morning at 7 a.m. This is a contrarian take on the events of the day ahead and what is likely to move markets, such as economic data releases, earnings, and other things. 
it is really good and that is completely unbiased of course so check that out contrarianpod.substack.com or contrarian.supercast.tech now on with the show okay mark samersky here welcome back everybody uh this is the mark this is the segment of the show where we ask our guests to tell us a little bit more about themselves and what they've been doing in their life and professionally especially to get them to this point and yeah so what are you doing other than uh trading and, and it's, it sounds like you're still in school there in in, in denmark uh, but yeah tell me um yes so basically i have uh, like a long history how did i end up in denmark but yeah uh, I, I always start like how did i get interested in uh, economics and finance yeah. So basically, I was around 18 and 19, and um, my family wanted to push me to become an engineer. Uh, okay. But instead of that, I was really interested in history and economics. So it was not really um, a clear path for me. And uh, somehow I, I, I ended up in Denmark, uh, where I started uh, sales and marketing. And I noticed that, well, I think uh, pursuing finance uh would be much better for me knowing that i i liked uh, math and um in denmark uh, this education locked uh math so i started accounting and finance and there uh, i majored uh, finance and i finished uh accounting and finance masters and um, during my education i started to look at option trading and um uh and futures trading. And I just wanted to try myself out because, you know, theory and practice, it's uh, two mm -hmm. other thing. And uh, it's really, really different. Uh, but as, as everybody knows, uh, in 2020, when oil went negative, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. one really good example why it's better to start uh, uh, practically to do something with yourself. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah interesting. Very cool. All right. So let's walk about. So you had 380% returns last year, 380. And this was all off of the Bitcoin short? Um, to be honest, I, I, I made some, uh, I, uh, beside that, I, I speculated on uh, oil price, meaning uh -huh. that uh, I'm not specifically uh, speculating on, on, on stocks, but I would uh, speci uh, specifically speculate speculate on indexes like okay or, or or big commodities okay so it's basically future it sounds like index futures or in just indexes yes indexes etfs or whatever etfs yes 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 so what led you to so you were long oil last year basically it was the time when uh uh russia attacked ah, yeah, sure. ukraine so it, it it was a it was an external shock shock to oil mm -hmm. so it started to go increase and i just uh, went on the train um, I, I didn't um i didn't get the trade uh, from the bottom part but i think uh the the war was another external shock which led to uh this inflationary period what we face mm -hmm. now as well yep 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 no question. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, the war actually uh, delayed the Fed's rate hike, their first rate hike. I believe they even said so. They were ready to hike in February and then they didn't until a month later. Yes. Um, it's it's the same way how uh, they, they had the, the, the COVID cut because they already started to raise uh, rates, but they had to cut. Correct. So basically, that's another reason uh, I, I think... Uh, the recession has a high probability because they already started to cut, uh, they already started to raise because they mm -hmm. knew that something is off with the system. And I think that time something was off with the repo market, uh -huh. which was uh, another indicator of uh, so we have some mis mistakes, errors in the system. Yeah. 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 You're going back to 2019 now when they were, when they were raising rates. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. And so now, so you so what kind of instruments do you do you, are you looking to trade now? Is this would it still be indexes and bitcoins and altcoins? Um, my honest opinion is that uh, ninety nine percent of the uh, cryptocurrencies are useless. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of. What's the one percent that aren't? <laughs> <laughs> or are you just saying was it just a matter of a figure of speech? 
Yeah, I mean, for the figure of speech, uh, my, my honest opinion, I, I, I do not really believe in Bitcoin either and neither in mm -hmm. uh, Ethereum and DeFi and these other uh, mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies, but I could see the ratio, the, the, the rationalism behind Bitcoin and yeah. Ethereum. I could mm -hmm. see, but I'm not like uh, a really huge believer. Okay. So for the other ones, just from a fundamental basis, you're... you're yeah. Mm -hmm. But... Okay, so what would let you? What's what's stopping you from shorting them then? Um, so the thing is with humans, humans are drawn to narratives, mm. and that's always have been, and this won't change in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So until you have this herd effect, then uh, who knows? Like it, it could generate such a huge momentums at times, then that. Uh, on the long term, I wouldn't really short Bitcoin. Okay. So me meaning that long term, I wouldn't get into a position that I'm like, okay, Bitcoin is going to go to zero. Okay. I think Bitcoin won't go to zero. And uh, most certainly, I think it will have a really rough, rough time, but it could uh, go up uh, actually quite high, knowing right. that narratives are... Uh, actually uh, can drive people and right. it could can and it can create huge momentums and creating that narrative that uh, we have this uh, uh, fed created business cycles or or whatever that we inflate all of our fiat currencies like it can draw many people uh, behind bitcoin mm -hmm. sure sure i see so that can keep it from collapsing i guess uh in the short yes. term <laughs> But ultimately, I mean, when you have a recession, especially if it's a deflationary recession, then people are going to need to liquidate assets. And you figure something as speculative as cryptos yeah. would fall victim to that, one would think, right? Yes, 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 of course. Like, I think it's going to hurt really, really bad, uh, mm -hmm. badly Bitcoin, like it, it won't go to zero, but <laughs> it will be closer mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. yes um interesting uh, it's interesting that you said uh a lot of things you're talking about here it sounds almost like economically you might be expecting stagflation which is you know low economic growth with inflation like we had in the 70s here in the u.s at least um is uh, that fair or you think not i think i elaborated uh on on the beginning of the the liquidity and how i think economic growth it's actually performs so meaning that when we hit the rock bottom there should actually innovation and yeah. the technology should uh, r rise in my right. opinion but um it could happen that we are going to have this stockflation like uh -huh. uh, two or three years but like it really depends like um yeah it I, in my opinion it, it depends on the words together what how it's going to play out like the geopolitical issues yeah, sure. the trading network what's going to be established with whom and uh there are many other external factors uh to decide that if it's this we will have uh this uh, stagflationary period or not right and us i think that's uh definitely it's it's um it's a huge country which has a huge balance in terms of trade, trade balance. So mm -hmm. it's hard to describe that we will have uh, stagflation, but I think it, it it is probable that we will have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you know when you say that there's a technical and technological innovation at the bottom? How do you know when we've reached bottom? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I haven't really talked it through yet. Okay. So I think I cannot answer for this question at this moment. Fair right enough. Now. That's, that's, that's an honest, more of an honest answer than many people give. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So, but, but not a, not an environment to take risks. What do you think of, have you thought at all about bonds? There's some talk now about people taking, buying short duration bonds because you get the coupon. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's a valid strategy right now mm -hmm. to you it uh, to do it with these short maturities, and mm -hmm. I think it could work out. However, uh, someone uh, should be some should be aware that uh, bond prices, uh, like bond prices, 
still can decrease. Mm, yeah. So if, if if they make this play, then they have, they have to uh, be aware that, uh, in my opinion, it hasn't uh, bottomed yet. All right, Mark Samirsky, thank you so much for joining the Contrarian Investor Podcast today. So in closing, can you maybe tell our listeners how they can find out more, more information about you? So uh, basically, I just created a Twitter account for myself because I haven't oh, had cool. what I was using, and it's uh, M. Samersky. So basically, okay. uh, not Mark, it's M. Samersky. Yes. Got it. And uh, I haven't really uh, uh, published anything yet, but I will work on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. But at M. Samersky, I'll look yes. for you on there. And the Covey link, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put that out there as well. Uh, I believe people can access that. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mark, for coming on. Very interesting conversation. It was great having you. Thank you all for listening. And with that, we look forward to speaking to you again next time. See you then. Thank you for listening to the Contrarian Investor Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. To subscribe to this podcast, simply open your favorite podcast software and search for Contrarian Investor. Follow us on social media by searching for Contrarian Investor on Twitter and Instagram. Send us your thoughts on feedback at contrarianpod.com. We look forward to speaking to you again next time.